So you want to learn about coding, huh? Maybe you want to get into software development or be a software engineer. Well, this video is going to give you that 10,000 foot view of what coding is and how to get started. The thing you want to remember as you learn more about coding is not only the coding, but also how to interview for a job. With that, this video was brought to you by Pramp. Pramp is a site where you can do mock interviews to prepare for software engineering or software development jobs at companies like Google, Microsoft, Twitter, and more. As you get more experience, Pramp will actually allow you to do interviews directly with the companies that are looking for coding talent. As you guys know, there is a huge rise in software jobs, but the competition is fierce. So stop preparing alone, get real coding interview practice with Pramp. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. All right, let's get started into intro to coding. Coding is the process of building software, and software runs almost everything. Every website you visit behind the scenes is an application that was built using code. Every single app on your smartphone was built using code. Every video game you play was created with code. Software exists for all kinds of things, including facial recognition, fraud detection, and it powers essentially all modern vehicles, drones, jets. There's such a huge variety of applications for all this software, but it all comes down to the basic one thing, and that is code. So code powers the entire world. Code is essentially a word to describe what we create with a programming language. So we use a programming language, which is like English, for example, but much more simple. There's only a couple keywords, and we type this out, and that process is called coding. So just like with normal languages, we have English, Spanish, French, and all kinds of different languages. There are a ton of computer programming languages. We've got C, we've got C++, C Sharp, Java, Python, Go, Scala, F Sharp, Ruby. <laughs> the list literally goes on forever. Now this video is going to be very basic, but it is going to have a lot of vocabulary if you're new. So because of that, I'm going to switch to the chalkboard so I can write some stuff out. So I'll see you then. Before I get started, I just wanted to introduce you guys to my secondary sponsor. <laughs> Her name's Kava Curry. She's a little darling. Say hi. <laughs> you covering the microphone. Ow! Oh. As you can tell, she's a little evil. Okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that is my long coat German Shepherd. <laughs> I just got her this weekend and she is so stinking cute. It's irresistible. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> That's a camera. <laughs> Oh, apparently it tastes good. So I'm gonna be bringing her into some of my new videos because she is officially named Kava the Coder. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she likes to code that much, but we'll see. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> don't bite my laptop. <laughs> As we mentioned earlier, coding runs everything. So if you wanted to break down everything into a simple, simple definition, you can think of coding as a black box. It's called a black box, but obviously in this situation, it's a white box. <laughs> so when someone says a black box, it essentially means you don't have to worry about what's going on on the inside. And this is from the user's perspective. So someone opens up their iPhone or their Android and opens up an app, they don't care what's going on with the code behind the scenes. All they care is that when they push a button, which is the input, Something happens, which is the output. So all computer programs are broken into input, something, output. The user only really cares about this and this. But as the coder, we go one step farther and we focus on this middle area right here. The stuff that makes this work is the code. And the whole concept of a black box is an example of something known as an abstraction which is just hiding the inner details and just allowing a very simple interface. So if you think about it, in our app, let's say this is the code, we create an interface, which is right here. This is how the user interacts with the application. That interface is very simple, very easy to use, and that is how an abstraction works. All this detail behind the scenes is blocked away. No one cares about that except the person writing the code. There are two primary types of interfaces, a command line interface 
and a graphical user interface, CLI or GUI. If you create a CLI, it allows the user to interact with your code using commands. So if you have a Mac and you open up the terminal, or if you have a Windows PC and you open up uh, the command prompt, this is an example of using commands. You can write code to allow people to type in commands in those terminal windows and your code can do things. Part of the reason people like command line interfaces is one, it looks really cool when you're just typing out commands and it feels nice. And you can also get very granular by adding extra flags and you can be very specific on what you want to happen. The second primary reason that people like command line interfaces is you can actually write applications to interact with these interfaces. So now we have a program interacting with a program. So this input now becomes an application, which consists of code. So this can actually interact with your application. So once again, the CLI allows you to interact with your code using commands, and you can also write scripts to execute those commands for you, and then it will do the interaction. The second thing here is a GUI, a graphical user interface. This is when you actually create buttons, so it's clickable and it's visual. So typically, if I had to generalize this a little bit, the CLI is for coders. The GUI is for clickers. And that's just a rude word to say <laughs> people who don't code. <laughs> so there's two possible ways to interact with your application. You can do it through code, or you can have someone do it themselves. The CLI, you can do both. You can write applications to interact with your code, or you can interact it with it yourself by typing in the commands yourself. The GUI only allows one of these options, which is the user interface. Generally, coders like to learn the CLIs because it enables them to do more options. Additionally, often a user interface will be very simple with a couple of buttons. And let's say there's only four buttons here. Well, the CLI might have five, six, or even 20 more options that are not listed in the GUI. So by using the command line interface, we can open up a lot more variety of possibilities. A lot of times people will call this interface here an API. And that's only if you can write code against this interface. So if you had a command line interface or something very similar, it might qualify as an API. Essentially, an API, well, it stands for Application Programming Interface. And essentially, this is going to open your application to certain commands, right? So you might have a command to add a user. You might have a command to delete a user. You might have a command to edit a user. You might have a command to find a user. And all of these things become the API endpoints. So once we have these endpoints, I can write an application over here to search for a user, to add a user, to do all of these various things through this API. Often you will find social networks, for example, open up an API. So you might have a Twitter API. So for example, let's say this is Twitter, and Twitter might have an API to do a bunch of things. This means that I can write an application over here to view people's Twitter stats and to socially rank them, or a website that allows you to schedule tweets. These kinds of things are all going to use this API. You can kind of figure out the theme here, right? We start with something simple, just a small application, but then we can write applications to interact with this application. <laughs> and we end up growing to this more complex system. So I am at risk of going a little bit too off track, so I'm going to pull back for just a little bit and let's just talk about some more of the basics. That's all I'm gonna cover in this video. I am going to be releasing a part two, so stay tuned. So thank you guys for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, click like, leave a comment on what you thought. You got any questions? And don't forget to check out the next video. Most importantly though, be sure to check out our sponsor, Pramp, if you guys need help with your interviews and you guys wanna get a job.